Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. My name is Hamburongoma. I am an ag agricultural economist with CIMIT based at the Southern Africa Regional Office in Harare. I'll be your host today. We have an exciting lineup today where we'll be talking about in the first of the main series of webinars under the Accelerated Innovation, Innovation Delivery Initiative, where we'll be talking about what ADI for short is doing in the space of agricultural advisories. To kick us off, I'm going to invite Kevin Kabunda, who is the chief of party of the Accelerated Innovation Delivery Initiative, the Southern Africa Regional Hub, Delivery Hub, to give us some opening remarks and to tell us a little bit about this webinar series. Kevin, over to you, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Ambulo. And um, I just want to welcome all of you to today's um, first in the series of um, exciting webinars uh, where we will share experiences um, and our partners talking about what we are doing on the ground and also the lessons we are learning. And um, basically to interact with the, the wider development platform. So the objective of the webinar series is basically to feature AID partners uh, who will present activities and emerging um, lessons over um, uh, a period of a couple of months. And uh, we today we are privileged that um, we will be speaking with um, Siat and Viamo. I I just want to um, take this opportunity to give a little bit of background on the program. Uh, this is the the gov U.S. government's Global Hunger and Poverty Initiative, and it is jointly funded by the United States of America, uh, USAID, and the Department of State. Uh, the goal of the activity, for those who do not know, is to provide critical support and to ensure that millions of smallholder farmers in Malawi, Zambia, and Tanzania uh, have information at their fingertips around innovations, demand-led and market-based approaches to maintain or increase food production, and also to be responsive to um, and mitigate uh, climate climate. Um, uh, climate change and, the, and its impact. Basically, um, ADA is implemented by a consortium of uh, partners, including public, uh, private, and non-governmental organizations, but is being led by CIMIT and the IFDC, which is the International Fertilizer Development Center. Uh, for today, um, I just have a few words to ensure that uh, we, we learn from our colleagues and uh, listen to what is happening on the ground. With those few words said, I'll hand back um, the platform to Hamburo. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Kevin. So for today, we have two presentations, uh, one from the Alliance of Biodiversity International and SEAT and from Viamo. So to kick us off, I'm going to invite um, my colleagues from Viamo to lead us in the presentation. It will be presented by two people, uh, Takondwa Mengezi, who is the country director for Viamo in Malawi, and Peo Salah, who is um, the program, a program manager under Viamo in charge of implementation of activities in Southern Africa. So the format of the, present, of the, of the webinar will be such that each presenter will have 20 minutes. And since they're speaking on the same subject, the presentation will be back to back, and then we'll have hopefully an ample amount of time for Q&A. So over to you, Takondwa and Peo. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Shambolo. Uh, Pearl, are you able to share the slides? Yes, TK, just give me a minute. So okay, sure. Yeah.
Great. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon uh, to colleagues uh, wherever you might be based. My name is Takundwa, Country Director for Viamo in Malawi, and I wanted to present to us uh, a project that we have been supporting the consortium in terms of uh, a digital intervention in order to leverage uh, digital innovations to deliver agriculture advisories at scale to the last mile. Next slide, please. So just to give an overview of Viamo, Viamo is a social enterprise, but also a, a digital technology company. So as Viamo, we look at ourselves as connectors and our main role is that we connect individuals and organizations to be able to make better decisions. And this really looks at information provision. As Viamo, we envision a world where all people have access to the information that they need to be able to live uh, happy, productive, and prosperous lives. And as Viamo, the main piece of technology that we use is the mobile phone. And this is for a number of reasons. The first one is really looking at the fact that globally, we know that the majority of people are actually disconnected from the digital economy. They're not um, they do not have access to the internet, but a lot of them do have access to very basic mobile phones. In terms of mobile penetration as well, uh, in terms of the countries where Viamo operates, we tend to see around 85% mobile phone ownership, as opposed to television and radio, which tends to be a bit lower. And because of this, we really see that the mobile phone is a very powerful device for us to be able to reach uh, underrepresented as well as disconnected populations around the world. So in terms of the overview of the scope of work, which Viamo is supporting within this project, we have a platform known as a three to one platform in Malawi and Zambia. And basically this is a toll free information service that is available to subscribers in the two countries. And this platform is hosting a number of messages that is really providing advisory messaging to the farming. So we have content that has been split up into different seasons, ranging from planting, harvesting, post-harvesting, and winter cropping in the local languages within those two countries. We also do SMS promotions, so we promote the content via SMS so that subscribers within the two countries on the various mobile network operators can actually receive these messages and be encouraged to access the information service. We also have an element of data collection. So we have deployed a three question survey to identify demographics of, of the participants so that at the end of the project, we can be able to have this data for additional analysis. We also have digital surveys and these digital surveys consist of two rounds of 10 questions that have been deployed and sent out to farmers in Zambia and Malawi in the six local languages. And yet again, this is really supporting data collection as well as a feedback mechanism for this project. So just to give a little bit more context and information around the 3 to 1 service. Uh, so the 3 to 1 service in Malawi or the 667 service in Zambia is basically the Viamo platform. And we can really think about this platform as a search engine without internet. So as I mentioned, this is really targeting very basic users of the mobile phones. The users are able to call in and access different information in the local languages from anywhere within those two countries. And for this service in Malawi, it's currently only available on Airtel and in Zambia, it's available on MTN. So at this point, let me hand it over to Pearl, who is our program manager on this project to take us through some of the activities as well as processes and steps that we took in implementing this project. Thank you.
Thank you, TK. Um, so I'm going to take us through the activities like he mentioned. Um, under the platform messages, um, the activities were broken down into the content development workshop. There was a scripting phase, a pre-testing phase, and then a go-live phase. So under the content development workshop, um, this was held in Salima in Malawi um, from the 7th to 9th of June. Um, content experts were invited by Summit, um, and then VAMO facilitated the session. So the experts were from Malawi, Zambia, and then Tanzania, and they included um, some government representatives as well. Um, so the experts were put into three groups um, to cover agronomy messages, harvesting and post-harvesting messages, as well as winter cropping messages. So um, during the workshop, we took them through, we took the experts through um, what the messages are supposed to be, the 30 key messages. So they are supposed to be relevant, engaging, and enjoyable, as well as actionable. And um, each group developed a number of messages. After that, we met together as the entire crew, and the messages were validated. Um, so the feedback gotten from the validation process was then factored back into the content uh, into the content that was developed, and a total number of thirty six key messages were created. So these thirty six key messages were optimized um, for mobile by the VAMO team. So we cleaned it up. We made sure that. Um, it, it was engaging, it was actionable, and it was something that the, the listeners would enjoy. So after we optimized this, um, we sent it to the Summit team for approval, and they also selected the final 30 messages, and those final 30 messages were customized for each country. So per the regulations, um, the government, we needed to seek government approval to be able to um, go live on the VAMO platform in both countries. So um, for Malawi, it was a bit faster as compared to Zambia, but then we were able to get the approval for the messages in both countries. And afterwards, the content was translated into Chichewa for Malawi, and then Tonga, Lozi, Nyanja, and Bemba for Zambia. Um, and then the content was then sent to submit for a final review. This process was necessary because um, though VAMO has consultants who do the translation, they probably would not have the agricultural context of some of the messages. So we send that message, we send those messages back to submit um, for a final review of the translations. And after they were approved, um, the content was recorded. So after recording, we went through a pre-testing phase. Um, so the pre-test is a focus group discussion that is aimed at assessing the navigation, tone, access, language, and sequencing of the key messages by a select group of the target audience. And this is necessary because of the regulations in both countries. So before any content goes live, on, on the VAMO platform in any of the countries, it has to go through pre-testing. So for Malawi, um, the audio files that were recorded were pre-tested in all three regions, Salima for the central, Nzimba for the northern, and Machinga for the southern, and that took place from the 10th to the 14th of July. Um, for Zambia, since we have a lot more languages, the locations were selected also based on that. Um, so there was Kabwe, Mumbwa, and then Mufuwe. Um, the farmers for the pre-test were sourced by the Agriculture Extension Development Officers in both countries. Um, in all, there were 47 participants uh, between the ages of 20 to 75 for Malawi and between the ages of 20 to 80 for Zambia. So we got some feedback and some recommendations from the farmer. I'll just talk about a few. So one feedback we got was last season, I tried to grow soya beans and it failed. And I was sad because I was told it was very lucrative. I'm going to try again this season, but this time around, I would wait and plant it at the right time as recommended. 
And then some recommendations we received um, spoke about, so on the topic of management of infested grains, the message states that crops should be left out and taken and taken and left let taking out and left out till 4 p.m. It was advised that the crop should be taken only out when it's sunny. So these recommendations were from the farmers. Um, some of them also had to do with the pronunciation and some of the word uses that um, we used in the content. So this feedback, after we got them and recommendations, we had to re-record some of the audio files. And after re-recording those files, they were uploaded onto the VAMO platform. So the content went live on both platforms in both countries on the 28th of July. And VAMO is expected to reach 830,000 listeners in one year. Um, Simit also provided a schedule um, for when each message should be live because of the seasons. And um, currently 12 out of the 30 messages are live in both countries. Um, VAMO is also going to be adding some ads to boost engagement in addition to the SMS promotional messages. So the ads are, so it should someone call into the VAMO platform and probably be listening to a content on health. After they listen to that, they'll be giving an ad or even before they get to that, they'll be given an ad that will tell them about the summit content and then they'll be directly directed straight to assess that content. So that is one of the things we would also be doing to boost the engagement on the platform. So we are going to get into the metrics um, from the 28th of July to the 23rd of August. Um, these are the numbers. Um, for Malawi, we have 56,198 unique listeners and the 9,460 unique listeners for Zambia. So across both countries, we have 65,658 unique listeners. Now this unique listeners listen to a number of key messages and you would realize that the key messages are more than the unique listeners. So it means um, on average, one, one listener is likely to listen to 1.3 um, key messages uh, for Malawi and then 1.8 for Zambia. So this is just a quick demographic breakdown for um, the listeners. Um, just to also add that um, when you call into the platform, you are not required to register, but then you are given the option. It's, it's completely optional. So when you call into the platform to listen to the content, after you listen, you'll be given the option to register. So this demographic um, breakdown is just for the, um, the listeners that actually opted to register. Um, so for language, for, for Zambia, because we have a number of languages, the breakdown is most of them. That is 54.5% um, of the listeners listened in Bemba. Um, and then it's, it's noteworthy that 61.9% uh, of them are females and a majority, which is 22.8% of the registered listeners are currently um, calling from Lusaka. Um, for Malawi, uh, it's slightly different in terms of gender where the males uh, have 63.2%, uh, which is higher. And since um, the main language for the platform is Chewa, there's no demographic breakdown in terms of that. All 100% of them listen to the content in Chewa and 13.1% um, of them um, called in from Ilongwe. So a deep dive into the key messages. Like I mentioned, 12 messages are currently live um, on the various topics, seed selection, land preparation and harvesting, mini irrigation and um, the rest. And it's noteworthy that uh, for seed selection in both countries, that is the most listened to content. And um, aflactosin and mitosin, uh, topic is the least listened to um, across um, both countries. So on the farmer filter survey, three questions were developed with and approved by the summit team. And since it's a survey, we seek consent from the listeners before they respond to the questions. 
Um, each listener is expected to respond to the survey just once, and um, that is after they listen to a key message. Um, if you listen to a key message and you respond to this, you are given the option to listen to another message. In that instance, you don't, you are not required to respond to the survey anymore. So there were three main questions, gender, um, the main crop, and then the number of hectares that is being cultivated. So for Malawi, 63% um, of the responses were from, um, were, were male and um, the crop, the main crop cultivated across both countries was maize. And the number of hectares that the listeners calling who call in also cultivate is between zero to five hectares for both um, for both countries. For the SMS promotion, and there's a breakdown. We we developed SMS promotional messages that were approved by Simit. Um, for these messages, they are sent out monthly. In Malawi, um, based on the regulation, we are allowed to send messages directly from the platform to the users. Um, but then in, in addition to that, we also have Airtel, who is the main telco supporting the service, also sending SMS to all Airtel users. In Zambia, the regulations are slightly different. So the messages are mainly sent just by the telco, which is MTN, to all um, MTN users. Um, so uh, this is the breakdown of activities under the digital surveys. So the digital surveys were targeted as um, attendees of the mega demonstrations held by the other partners in this consortium or in this project. So the script, the survey tool was designed or developed by Summit. Um, Bamo optimized the script. Um, the surveys are currently live and um, they go out twice a week um, to participants who are yet to complete the survey. The completion rate for Zambia currently is 35% and for Malawi is 45%. Um, just to give a bit of context, um, mostly from our experience in doing these digital surveys, the average um, percentage of completion that we get is um, between 10 to 20%. So we have in 35 and 45% is actually very commendable for, for this um, project. I think that is it for the presentation. Um, we are open to answer any questions. No, thank you, Pell. Thank you, the Vermo team. Thank you, Pell and uh, Takondwa. I think in the interest of time, I'll propose we move on to Annie, Annie Gosh from SEAT. So Annie is a senior scientist with the Alliance of Biodiversity and SEAT. He has extensive experience in developing uh, monitoring tools for agricultural systems. His research focuses on utilizing digital tools um, sorry, utilizing climate, his research focuses on utilizing climate modeling, remote sensing, and socioeconomic modeling uh, to support adaptation and mitigation strategies. Annie is currently based in Nairobi. Annie, over to you, please. Uh, if you can make it in under 20 minutes, that would be great. Then we have a little bit more time for, for Q&A. Thank you, Takondo and Peo. Over to you, Annie. Um, thank you, Hambulu. Uh, I just want to confirm that you can see my screen in the presenter view. We can see it in presenter view, yes, with your notes. Okay, so let me guide. Just give me one second. So that's okay, sure. Change. Uh, is it? Yes. Is it fixed now? now? Okay. Yes, sure. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Hambolo. Thank you for the platform and organizing the webinar. It was great to, uh, it was an exciting start with the VMO colleagues. Uh, so as Hambolo mentioned, I'm a scientist uh, with the Alliance of Biodiversity and SEAT. And before I start my, uh, you know, uh, activities description, 
under the aid i program i will give a very quick overview of the organization uh, the alliance of biodiversity and seat as many people in the audience is probably here uh, hearing about it for the first time so the alliance is a collaboration between biodiversity international seat two different cgr organizations and still a member of the cgir uh so we aim for uh, delivering uh, research based solutions that harness agricultural biodiversity and sustainably transform food systems to improve people's lives the solutions we develop address the global crises on uh, malnutrition climate change biodiversity loss and environmental degradation uh, our work is done in partnership with various key stakeholders that involves local community level organizations to national research systems as well as different private sector and interregional bodies uh, operating in the different region uh, so the alliance is uh, structured in uh, around uh, six levers uh, that uh, that is uh, you know at the nexus of uh, agriculture environment and nutrition we uh, we also play a catalytic role in uh, developing interventions that can trigger multiplier effect for positive change uh, so the alliance has a competitive advantage uh, in terms of being present in uh, different countries this map shows uh, the different countries where we have Uh, either staff or projects or presence uh, so this has helped quite a bit uh, uh, for, for this ai program to quickly get up to speed on in, in implementing some of the quick wins now in terms of the project uh, our activities they primarily focus on empowering smallholder farmers with timely climate impact advisory including good agronomic practices um, there are three primary objectives we are uh, planning to uh, we were planning to achieve in the first year uh, first is support in delivering advisory to different challenges uh, second is establishing local technical groups following a participatory process and uh, third is scale bundle advisory and financial products specifically in zambia so what uh, i will do today is to highlight you know uh, a couple of these activities and also describe in details what kind of impact we have seen on the ground so far now the approach we take is very much demand driven so first we want to understand what is uh, needed where and how to, how can we best provide you know different interventions and technologies uh, in the region so we start with a stakeholder engagement process in uh, all the countries and from there we basically uh, go into a similar process that we we have mentioned about the content development with the experts uh, but then at the same time uh, two other activities important activities uh, go on uh, which is uh, identify the channels through which this content could be delivered because the content nature would be very different if it is delivered getting delivered through sms or radio or tv or igr Uh, and then also develop digital platforms that can make access to this content much easier uh, so that we can minimize the human intervention and uh, produce uh, the and deliver the content in shorter time to these different uh, channels and different partners and the lastly uh, we look into we look into the impact and sustainability so by impact i we want to see the impact of this uh, information delivery to the farmer and sustainability is basically beyond the duration of the project how we can ensure these services can be uh, maintained so first i'll start with you know some initial uh, aspects of the stakeholder engagement so what we did was uh, it, you know during the month of uh, march april may we went to different countries we spent almost a week in every country so we invited different uh, partners of the ai program as well as national uh, assistants like for example the med agencies the extension officers and we engaged with them to identify various aspects so one of the ones that i will highlight here uh, is basically for example on the left hand you see uh what are the different uh, impact of weather events uh, how those are affecting the crops and what are the different adaptation solutions so uh we could engaged in a participatory process where we asked uh, what we divided the different uh, participants into different groups based on the region they were coming from because the weather events have a region, strong regional uh, component and they were uh, they were requested to you know highlight the key challenges and what kind of effect that can bring on the crops or the valuations they are uh, th th those are primarily grown and then what kind of solutions uh, also can be implemented 
Uh, and then on the right hand side, uh, you can see uh, like it basically gives us some idea of a very localized level. What are the different crops grown and what are the cropping seasons, uh, primary cropping seasons? And then the idea is basically we link this to or, or here I'm showing two, but there are, you know, multiple of this feedback that we have collected through this uh, um, uh, exercise. And we are what we have been doing is linking all of them to come up with a more comprehensive picture on, OK, what are the different challenges at the granular level and what kind of solutions can be uh, implemented or how the content should be developed to, around that. So uh, I will highlight on uh, two such uh, solutions here. Uh, one is uh, a pharma TV program. Uh, so this is this is based on a successful model called Shamba Shape Up. Uh, it's a popular agriculture television uh, program or reality farm makeover show uh, from Kenya. It has been operational in Kenya for the last decade, little more than a decade. Uh, and it has been also tested in Uganda and Tanzania at various points of time. Uh, so when the ADI opportunity came in, we were already in the process of introducing this program in Zambia in the, main of, in the name of Bunda Makeover. So we decided to quickly jump in uh, and identify this as a quick win uh, to promote good ag agronomic practices as part of uh, ADI. So uh, it follows an edutainment model. Each video typically features a visit to a farm where experts give advice on improving production in areas you know, so it could be ranging from soil uh, conservation to seeds to, uh, you know, financial planning, climate literacy, a pretty broad range of topics. Uh, the colleagues from Viamo made my life much easier. Uh, the process they actually described in their uh, in their the presentation, uh, it's a similar kind of process that also followed here. Uh, it's a very very much participatory process which involves scouting uh, in, and going to the farm, uh, identification of the farm, and uh, you know prioritizing uh, the challenges that will be addressed in different uh, videos. So because the shows addresses real challenges faced by farmers and provides practical, easy to implement solutions, um, it, it is quite attractive. You know, in, in Kenya, it has been continuously uh, uh, getting uh, 8 million uh, viewership uh, every week. Uh, that includes both, you know, the farming and non-farming community. Um, and because it is a blend, a blend of entertainment and education, it is making, uh, it makes it very much engaging and informative for its audience. Now, I, I just want to highlight here that, as I mentioned, uh, when uh, the AI opportunity came in, uh, we were already in the process. So we could actually produce uh, uh, four or five videos uh, following the same model as part of the AI program, which is related to the AI uh, broad goals. Um, overall, what we saw uh, is uh, what we achieved was there were like 20 episodes uh, that were uh, filmed. Uh, and each episode had four uh, different segments. So we are talking about 80 segments that were produced. And I'm, I'm mentioning this because in this upcoming season, we will uh, cover much larger amount of topics uh, through the AI program. So this will give you an idea of the scale uh, in terms of both number of videos or the materials, as well as the reach that we are uh, uh, hoping to get this year. Now, for the from the first year, uh, so we did. Uh, so there was a baseline and endline survey that was conducted. Uh, for you know, uh, and also there was a survey uh, just after the uh, episodes were aired uh, in in uh, in different languages. So I the bench, you know, in the in the previous slide there were three languages that were mentioned in which the episodes were being aired in Zambia. So. But specifically focusing on the farming community, what we saw was the reach was little over, direct reach was little over 400,000. And when we asked, uh, you know, for these uh, communities, like um, for these uh, viewers, uh, on an average of how many people they looked uh, at the show uh, with, you know, in the family, in the friends, in the neighbors. So the average response was three people. So, uh, you know, we can see an amplifier effect uh, here uh, and uh, you know, assuming that uh, with a 400,000 uh, unique viewer, uh, we actually reached reached out to almost 1.2 million viewers, considering the amplifier effect. Now we want to also we also wanted to go deeper on a little bit on the performance. Uh, so what we found that you know there was uh, a 
relatively, you know, imagining this is the first time the program is being aired uh, and the first of a kind on agriculture uh, advisory and uh, related, uh, you know, uh, contents. We saw that there were, you know, 30%, really over 30% farmers so who watched. Uh, and then uh, there was uh, one interesting uh, aspect that came out after the survey is uh, when comparing with the baseline, we saw in the end line that uh, many of the uh, you know, three quarters of the viewers uh, are, are mentioning that television has become their main source of information uh, for farming. And a third of uh, the viewers said that it became their most useful source. And this situation was quite an improvement from the uh, uh, you know, baseline survey where radio was, with, you know, was listed as one of the most important ones. So we are assuming that, you know, like maybe because it is, it has something to do with the way the information is presented. It's a new thing. So it must have created a, you know, a lot of uh, uh, expectation and excitement within the community. Um, and then uh, moving further into uh, what did we found, find, you know, around the different topics that we covered. Uh, for the financial management, you know, we saw that, that there was an improvement in the knowledge and practices related to financial record keeping and understanding uh, of key financial concepts. And we found it, we find it to be very key in terms of any kind of uh, farm decision making. Uh, for, for example, in soil testing, we saw that increased level of awareness uh, that happened uh, because of the, you know, episodes that we uh, aired on soil testing. Uh, on climate adaptation, we saw that there were some evidences that the episodes influenced the adoption of improved seeds and crop rotation uh, for, you know, a better management. Uh, for the fertilizer and irrigation, a majority of the farmers uh, used uh, fertilizer uh, uh, you know, uh, but less uh, irrigation. So we, uh, so the so the program was able to boost awareness around you know benefits of something like solar uh, pump um, or or uh, you know uh, what what kind of additional benefit irrigation can bring in and how the farmers can access them. So, but we also acknowledge that it is too soon uh, to have impact that can be seen as heavier change. Uh, it was only the first year. Uh, and also, we uh, it is too soon to assume that there will be immediate technology adoptions uh, by the farmers. So the next uh, technology that we want to talk about is uh, what we call aclimate. It's a Spanish word. Uh, so it's a, a short history of aclimate is uh, basically it started from uh, our uh, activities in Latin America, we saw a large uptake. So activity is a platform, agroclimatic forecasting platform uh, that includes crop modeling and a different you know, other type of modeling that basically gives a, a decision support system, uh, a, a, a complete decision support system for the smallholder farmers. Uh, so, and it also helps farmers to manage, better manage uh, climate risk, optimize crop yields and give information for adaptation, adaptation decisions, for example, you know, when to best plant the crop based on the seasonal forecast. Uh, so uh, we, so what we are uh, building on is there has been a, several locations where Acclimate has been deployed in, uh, in African countries. So we have a version in Angola that has been, that is being used by the ministry. We also have another version operational in Ethiopia that is again uh, used by ministry uh, and reaching uh, hundreds of thousands of farmers. So learning on these lessons, we decided to take Akimate uh, to the AI country. So where we stand is we have a very, uh, you know, we have a beta version ready, uh, working with uh, different partners uh, where, you know, uh, for different locations, uh, we, have, we have not exposed a, you know, throughout the country, but for some key locations where the weather stations that are available, uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, giving out uh, information on what the uh, seasonal forecast is looking like, and uh, and also in the process of continuous improvement of this, working closely with the national net agencies and the national extension agencies because that's very critical. Now, the last piece I want to mention here is the business model. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the business model, as I mentioned, it's very important that we make sure these uh, services that we are talking about uh, are operational. Uh, after the project funding ends. So basically when we were doing the stakeholder need assessment, we tried to understand uh, you know, um, how to make, how to develop these uh, business models in different countries with different groups. So basically it boils down to a single question. Will the farmer be interested in paying for the service? And if they are, then what 
uh, what is the mechanism of, for doing that? Uh, so we try. We were trying to identify who are the key partner uh, and what are the main resources they can bring in. Uh, also, you know, uh, heart of our service is the value we deliver to farmers, helping them to address specific challenges. How much of you know uh, farmers value that? And also, we want to ensure effective communication. Um, what are the best channel for reaching the farmer? Whether it is SMS, IVR, or you know, a call center or a radio or any other channel. Uh, it is also important to understand, you know, like what are the different farmer segments we are talking about? Are we talking about like a small scale, you know, subsistence farmer? Are we talking about farmers who are taking their producers to the market? Uh, so basically trying to demystify all these different complex actors and mechanisms that is involved in developing a business case. So uh, what we found uh, is quite interesting. So I'm presenting here on the left, the case from uh, Zambia, one case from Zambia, and on the right, one case from Tanzania. So you can see like the partners, the, the, the attendees, they were able to identify you know, different uh, key partners uh, who, will, who we need to work together one for one such business cases. Uh, but what is important is the revenue stream, right? So. Uh, you know, it's basically there are things like uh, avenues like subscription, uh, advertisement, the grants, you know, participation fee, all these were mentioned. There was a very strong emphasis on bundling of services. So, for example, bundling of seeds with uh, advisory or fertilizer with advisories, those such sort of services. So what uh, we are currently doing at this point is we have a lot of this uh, input from the stakeholder engagement. Each country, from each country, we have you know around four or five. So we are talking about uh, ideally fifteen to twenty you know uh, business cases. Uh, so we are in the process of you know uh, working uh, through them uh, and develop some business case strategies and also working with the scaling uh, you know initiatives within the one CGIR about how you know what are the uh, of potential of any of these business cases to be scaled. And if there are partners uh, through whom we can actually test some of these models. So now we I also wanted to highlight what's uh, next, uh, what, what is the plan for the upcoming uh, season. Uh, so basically we want to you know, take a Munda makeover uh, to a larger scale in Zambia. We are already planning uh, in terms of you know, doing a bi-weekly weather and seasonal forecast segment for five minutes. Uh, we also want to scale the learning from farmer field school and de demos in the TV medium, uh, and then also promote you know other uh, good agriculture practices. Uh, and this will this this year from this year we'll also implement a rigorous impact assessment work that is actually being supported through multiple programs for uh, Munda Makeover in uh, Zambia. Uh, then uh, we uh, because of the you know. Uh, the timing of our, from the last season, we didn't really able, we were not really able to bundle uh, the services uh, in Zambia. Uh, when I say bundle services, is basically bundling services with other private sector partners. But this year, we are go we are going to roll it out uh, with uh, some microfinance companies that we have already identified. Uh, and then some new exciting partnerships are coming up uh, in different countries uh, in, in terms of the, the delivery mechanism. And then the rest, uh, the, the last one is basically, we'll most likely be working with Viamo again. Uh, we, uh, this needs to be sorted out, is to you know do more elaborate feedback collection through a platform uh, called GeoFarmer, which also you know works very closely with uh, the AI m &E, uh, activity around uh, feedback. So with that, I'll end my presentation here, and uh, you know looking, I'm happy to answer any question and answer questions with our Viamo colleagues. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Uh, so colleagues, those are the two presentations from our partners on ADI. Basically, ADI makes investments in four thematic areas. One is to strengthen seed systems. The other is uh, advancing agricultural advisories, um, making some investments in strengthening soil health uh, interventions, and also improving fertilizer use efficiency. We are also making interventions in strengthening SMEs. So what we had today is just a snippet of the kind of work that we are doing on the agriculture advisories front. So at this point, I'm going to open it up for Q&A. Uh, if you have a question, please just go ahead and um, open your mic and just speak. Your, Jose, could you help us with the 
Letting people speak. Thank you very much. Over. Uh, I see one question uh, here. Uh, is it in the in the chat? If it is okay, I can uh, quickly respond to that. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So the question is, if the Munda Makeover series content can be extended uh, to other channels? Yes, definitely. So the way it works in Kenya is, um, uh, you know, Shamba Shipak works with his sister uh, mobile advisory called iShamba. Uh, so the idea is to create a two-way uh, channel where uh, if there is, uh, so one is definitely, you know, uh, sending out key messages from the videos, as well as if the farmers have subsequent questions uh, based on the contents, they can also reach out. So definitely that can be done. And this is something we need to coordinate uh, among ourselves. And uh, one other uh, medium is the radio of which uh, we are already working with, you know, last season we worked with the uh, National Agriculture Information System in Zambia. So this uh, this season we will uh, coordinate with other AI partners to see how we can package, repackage the contents uh, and uh, distribute them. Thank you. And just to add that on ADI, we are using multiple platforms to deliver these agricultural advisory. So you saw from VMO that their technology Basically, is based on mobile, simple mobile, simple feature phones using the interactive voice response platforms. You saw from SIAT that they have the TV program, they have the online climate too. We have other partners that are using radio. So the whole idea is to try and reach farmers in whatever form they are able to get this information. And so there's multiplicity of approaches that are being used. And of course, uh, our designs, our interventions are human-centered. Farmers are at the center, so that's why you heard even in the presentation from uh, from Annie, farmers were involved. Lots of consultations. It was the same with the VMO in the content development workshop. Farmers were there, and there was pre-testing with the farmers in the field. So, any other questions? I see another question in the chat. It says, in your impact pathways, have you validated how viewership or listenership impact adoption and well-being? So, Annie, do you want to talk about the impact assessment planned on, on Munda Makeover, for example, in response to this question? And then I'll come to that. Thank you, Robert, for that question. Yes, I can quickly comment on that. So the baseline, so the surveys we conducted this year, uh, it was more like, you know, a light touch version, but it was quite extensive with a sample uh, of, you know, a few thousands. Uh, so we had a number of questions and indicators could be, uh, you know, uh, identified that can, uh, that can tell us more about the well-being. Uh, then the other one is basically uh, for the plan for this year is a full-fledged, you know, uh, our city that we are organizing uh, around the impact of Munda Makeover. So we, so we are definitely trying to address it as much as possible. Thank you, Anne. And just to add that also, we are adding on to the VM activity, a dynamic platform basically focused on, on, on feedback trying to ensure that we're getting feedback from farmers, but the design there is a bit different from what was presented today. And the design there is, among other things, intended to enhance our learning. So it would be designed in some sort of a randomized control trial. So yes, Robert, we are making efforts and strides to ensure that we can do some learning even as we go along. I see Jonathan has put something in the chat. Do you want to just speak, Jonathan? Thank you. Okay, maybe I'll just read it. Jo Jonathan, oh yeah. Jo oh, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, there you are. Yeah, um, fantastic presentations from uh, Viamo and from, from Annie. Um, I think these are, are definitely gonna make a massive impact uh, you know, for selected audiences, well, for, for a lot of audiences. But again, there's an element within these countries, especially in Zambia, 
in, in still very rural parts and in Malawi in very rural parts where, you know, simple, what we call access to technology is still very much foreign and out of reach of many people. Um, and ScanForm for me, um, it's something that I, I will be implementing in this upcoming season. ScanForm for me offers an opportunity for both a push and a pull solution. So I can design a digital document that I can leave with the farmer and uh, he can complete. So I can design it any way that we want it to be designed. It can be designed around agronomy. It can be designed around extension. It can be designed in any way. And that gets uploaded uh, by a data capture, which effectively is my agronaut. Or the other way around is I could then go in field if I have a team um, and they need to capture data quite rapidly and not use technology or not use any form of device uh, and basically just use the, 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 the paper based or it's actually a very special type of paper. Um, and again, it's worked very effectively for HIV monitoring in Malawi. So I, I want to demo that. Um, I think what's happened is that we've become a little bit over reliant on the solutions we can offer digitally, and it's leaving the it's leaving the audience behind. So we're collecting information, but again, whether it's actually making an impactful, uh, measurable outcome, I, I've yet to see that fully. So I wanted to share that with you guys because the the guys from QED are doing quite a good job on it, and I, I was very impressed to see the results. And it comes with associated metrics as well, so you can actually do the M and E on how successful the data is being collected and so on. So I thought I'd share that with the guys. Cheers, thanks, Ambolo. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Very interesting too, and very relevant for the kind of work we do. And we look forward to your, your presentation in the near future on ADI. Do we have any other questions before I say one or two things as we wrap up the webinar? We have four minutes. Any other questions? Okay, I don't see any questions. Okay, there's one question. Um, okay, no, this is an internal question. All right, any other questions from the from the participants? Okay, maybe just a small quick announcement. This is just the first in the series uh, of several webinars that are planned on ADI. Today we heard a lot. We heard about agricultural advisories from our partners ABC and Viamo. So these are webinars that will run monthly on the same link. Our information will be sent out prior to each date. The next webinar will be on 28th September. And in that webinar, we're going to hear about innovations for soil mapping at scale and strengthening indigenous vegetable and spice value chains in Zanzibar. And this will be presented by our partners, the World Vegetable Center and the Zanzibar Agriculture Research Institutes. On that same day, we're going to hear about the gender and social inclusion and backfeed strategies in ADI that are designed to facilitate delivery with a difference. And this will be presented by our colleagues in CIMIT that are involved in the backfeed activities. So for now, it's my, my pleasure and the honor to thank Jonathan, to thank, sorry, Takondwa and the Takondua, Peo, the Viamo colleagues, and Ani Gosh from CIAT, from ABC, for presenting today. And also like to thank the, the participants. I see now we have 33, including the presenters. So the next webinar will be announced on the same platform. Thank you very much. If you have further questions, further follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to us and also to reach out to the presenters. With that, I think we can close the webinar. We are right on time. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Bye-bye.